Hey, card making friends, Sandy McIver here. Welcome back. Today I'm playing with some new hero art goodies. I'm going to be playing with the Looking Glass dies. This is Winter Forest. It's three die cuts. They layer to stack and create a mini scene. And I'm taking the sentiment from another new set. This is Christmas Robins, and I'll be along a little bit later to do a tutorial on them. There's three new backgrounds, and I'm going to be using this one. This is Winter Swirl Bold, and I'm going to be using it as the background for today's card. Now you'll notice that these are rubber stamps, and they've got a foam backing. So you need to take the foam and the paper out of your misty. I'm putting my stamp in there face up. I'm adding a piece of my cardstock right over top, and I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of it so I get it to stick to the lid of my misty. Next, I'm going to be heat embossing this, so I'm going to use my Versamark ink. This is a special ink that will hold the embossing powder in place for me until I can heat set it. And I have just re-inked, so I have a nice juicy ink pad, so I should get a nice, nice, nice solid image from this. Okay, so I'm closing it, giving it a good rub just to make sure that I disperse that ink nicely. Look at that. Awesome. And then we are going to cover it with the white embossing powder. Shaking off the excess. I like to do half at a time. I find I get less spillage that way. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to heat set this and you'll see that it turns bright white. And then that means that it's cooked. And I'm going to heat set the whole front of this card. It's going to make a beautiful backdrop for the little art piece that we're going to create. Well, I've got the Misty out. I decided to do the sentiment as well, and I'm going to white heat emboss that onto a scrap of black. And I like to put a little bit bigger piece in there just so I have something to hold onto. Again, I'm using the Versamark ink and uh, giving it a good stamp. We're going to cover it with white embossing powder, shake off the excess, and we're going to heat set it. And we will be doing some fussy cutting because there isn't a die for this one. Next, I want to add my card front to my card base. I have an A2 size top folding card base. I'm adding some adhesive on the back of my card front, and I like to tuck my card base up into the left-hand corner of my score buddy, and then I use that ridge to add the card front to it. It uh, really tucks it in there nice and tight, and I get a really nice finished product. So here's the three pieces that we're going to be using today, and you'll notice that it Kai cuts right out of the front of a card. So in order to make the little square, we need to add a square die. So I'm going to be adding that to the outside of each one of the three stacking looking glass dies. And I'm using watercolor paper for this. And the finished is just a little bit over two and a half inches square. So if you just cut a, a strip that's a little bit wider than that, you should have no problem getting all three pieces out of it. So I'm running it through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine. And I'm just going to take off the tape and the dies. And you will see just how easily these little guys pop out. These dies are beautiful cuts. Now there's a quick way to get a cute little art piece. Isn't that sweet? So we're going to repeat this process and we're going to do the trees next. And I like running them back and forth. That way it ensures that the dies are cut through really, really well. I'm using fairly new cutting plates, but if you have a warped one, running it through a couple of times will help as well. So here we go. Here's the trees and see how easily all the background pieces pop out. And speaking of background pieces, the next one we're doing is the trees. And I want you to save both of the pieces because we're actually going to use the negative uh, piece for the card that we're making today, not the positive piece, not the one that is shown in the diagram with the dies. So here's the piece we're going to use. And then the other piece is the one we're going to save for later. So see how tall the mountains are? The other piece, the mountains are really short. We need one more piece for the background and I'm going to cut this out of a piece of Hammer Mill 100 because I'm going to be doing some ink blending for the background for the sky. So the diagram on the card shows you how to lay it out and again I'm just going to show you here. Here's the trees and they're quite short so they're kind of below the deer's little bum but if you use the piece that is normally scrap it makes nice tall mountains and i like that so that's the piece that i'm going to use so i'm watercoloring i'm using the uh altenu i think it's 24 pack of the watercolors and what i did was i just did a very very light gray 
and went over my trees and I'm going to let those dry before I add some more detail. Next I'm doing the mountains and I'm going to do two tones of green. I start with a light and then I'm going to add a little bit darker just to add a little bit of depth to my card and you notice that I left that one peak white I'm going to be doing a little bit of a uh, nouveau overlay over that to make some snow at the top. So I didn't worry about getting the tips completely done. And here I'm just mixing a little bit of darker green, just off the camera a little bit. And I'm going to be adding that to my mat. And there we go, just some added depth. So I've got the light green in the foreground, the dark green in the background. And then once it's dry, we will add some snow. And I'm cleaning up in between each one because I don't want to take some of those colors and bring it through to the next. I don't think I want a green deer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm starting with a pale brown. And I'm going to do a wash on the entire deer. And be careful not to go down past his feet because he's actually standing on some snow. And we're going to add a little bit of glimmer to that at the end when it's dry. So here I'm coming in with some brown and just adding a little bit of darker highlight. I'm not doing his behind because where I live, the behinds on the deers are white. So I want to leave that very, very light. And I'm going to be adding some gel pen dots to it once it's dry. So again, just adding a whole bunch of the brown, get a nice variegation in the color, and we're going to let that dry. So this piece is dry. If it isn't, you can use your heat tool to dry it. I'm going to use a white gel pen, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of little dots all over his behind. It just kind of adds a little bit of interest. Can, he's kind of a silhouette, but it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of detail. There we go. Moving on to my mountains, I'm going to be using some Nouveau Crystal Drops and these are the Simply White and I'm going to add some snow. And I'm just drawing them in and then I'm using the tip of the bottle just to pull it around and even it out a little bit. So it's adding to the depth of the little art piece that I'm creating. And next up, I'm going to be using some stickles. These are the Crystal Stickles and I wanted a little bit of um, glimmer in my snow so I'm just adding a little bit kind of down the edges on each of the little caps and when you saw me squeeze it on the back of the piece of paper that's to make sure that it's not going to burp and make a mess all over my art piece and here I'm adding the stickles just along the top of that uh, little mountain that the deer is standing on so that it looks like snow Okay, we have to let these dry. They take about 30 minutes to dry, so we need to set them aside. So you need to go do something like, you know, feed the dog, fold the laundry, something. And uh, the trees that are now dry, I'm going to be using a Zig Clear color marker. And this is number 094. And it's kind of a gray brown. And I am likening these to birch trees. So where all the little notches are that the die cut out, I'm just adding this darker uh, color to make it look like birch trees. Again, just a little bit of detail, but it goes a long way on this little mini art piece. And here we are back while we're waiting for all of that sticky stuff to dry. We're going to do our fussy cutting and cut out our Merry Christmas. And you'll notice that I'm using embroidery scissors. They have a little bit of a curved end. And the other trick, I like to move my paper at the same time. I find cutting is easier doing that. I'm using two colors for my ink blending. This is Hero Arts. It's lemon yellow and bubblegum. And I'm using the blending brush. And I'm going corner to corner on this because I want both colors across my sky. But I'm only going to have the top portion of the sky showing. So if you do it on an angle like this, you'll get both colors. So yellow on one side, pink on the other. And I'm not worrying about blending it too much. There's such a little bit of it that shows it's really not worth doing all the extra work trying to get a perfect blend. And when you get to the middle, I did overlap into the yellow because I wanted that light orange. Just It was kind of one of the colors at sunset and blending those two colors together kind of produces that. And it gives it a nice warm finish when you put it in behind all the mountains and the trees and the little deer. So there we go. See how pretty it is behind there? Just a little bit. Okay, so everything's fairly dry. I'm going to get out my Barely Art Glue and we're going to start gluing these together. Love this stuff. It's got a really, really fine tip on it, which makes putting things like this together super easy without getting glue all over the place. 
So I'm just going around the outline. I'm adding these two to the top of each other. And actually, my Nouveau drops are not quite dry on my mountains. So you're going to see I'm being very careful with them. And I'm trying really hard not to touch that white stuff. I'm so impatient. I couldn't wait for it to be dry. So I'm just laying that over top. I just had glue at the bottom. So I'm just gently holding on to it. And because I've got two layers in front of it, it's okay to put it down like this because they're not actually touching the work surface. Adding some more glue on the back and putting my final back piece in there. Doesn't that create an awesome art piece? Okay, so you just glued three layers together, four layers together. So what I like to do is lay them on my flat surface and I'm going to add a couple of acrylic handles just to let the glue dry. Okay, I folded my laundry, my glue's dry, so now we can add it to the front of the card. Again, using the uh, Barely Glue, I'm just going to put a little bit around and I'm centering this kind of at the top portion of my card and then add a couple of acrylic handles just to really hold it down there, make it nice and flat so that it looks professional when it's all finished and dried. While you're waiting for that, you can add your sentiment underneath and I'm trying to center it. Having a little bit of a fuss there. There we go. So here's the two cards and there's something that I wanted to point out to you. This is the card that I just finished. This is the card that I shared on August the 25th on my blog. And this one is actually done with a stencil called Starry Night. And so what I did was I used a blending brush to blend some of the Versamark ink through the stencil onto the uh, sand colored cardstock and embossed that way. So I didn't have the background stamp when I was making the card. So that's the difference between the two. This one you'll see, it's got a little bit of a tighter design. It's a little bit smaller with thinner lines, which is really pretty. But I also like the Starry Night. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, more masculine perhaps but I think they both look quite nice. And if you don't want to do quite so much work, what you can do is not do the square outline and just cut the deer out of your card front, add the trees in behind, and do your ink blending right on your card front for this one. And then for the blue one, all I did was tuck a little piece of blue cardstock in behind the two die cuts and then used a similar color to stamp my sentiment. So there's a couple more card ideas for your holiday cards. I have listed all of the supplies that I've used underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where I have them listed over there as well. And I have a PDF file that you can download with all the cutting instructions and everything. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And until next time, toodles!